What is going on, Governor? It's Jiskul here, and today we're going to bring you a beginner's guide for epic archer commander pairings. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to hook you up with some amazing archer pairings for new players and advanced players into Rise of Kingdoms. Now, if you're into Commander Guides, then you should like and subscribe. We've got a ton of videos and playlists on this topic. We'll make sure to have those cards flashing across the top as we go. And we are a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms, so consider liking and subscribing if you're into Commander Guides. Um, as you're looking at epic archer commanders and pairings that you can explore, I want to set a really clear expectation, especially if you're in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms. And that is that archers are somewhat countered by cavalry. I say somewhat because it's honestly not that big of a deal. Uh, the different units do counter each other. Archers are a counter to infantry. Infantry are a counter to cavalry. Cavalry are a counter to uh, archers. However, that boost is pretty small. The reason I'm telling you about it, though, is that in the early game of Rise of Kingdoms, a lot of people are going to be running around with Minamoto, where they've maxed either the first one or two skills on that commander, um, and he's a cavalry commander. So if you are going the route of investing in archers, you can expect to encounter some amount of folks who are really working hard to counter what you're doing. With that said, Archer commanders are pretty phenomenal for a couple different scenarios. Uh, one of them has some of the very best utility available. Of course, there's two archer commanders that we're going to be talking about and several commanders that don't actually care about what type of troop you're bringing that can be very good with these archers. Um, those two archers we're going to talk about are Kusunoki, who is a garrison commander and is focused on raw damage and hitting multiple targets, and then Herman, who is a single target utility commander. He does decent damage to that single target. He does generate some amount of rage in the fourth skill and also has a silence on the first skill. It's that silence that we're going to talk about a little bit and try to play with. So as we explore epic archer pairings, and I'm going to rank where I think some of them fit into the grand scheme of things, um, I, want, I want you to keep in mind that your... Uh, Kusunoki is kind of about damage, and your Herman is about utility. Now, I say that, but there is one sort of unique thing about Kusunoki, and that is that he clears all um, negative status effects that are on your march in the first skill, which is very interesting. Um, now, if he happens to be unable to cast his first skill because he's silenced, well, then you can't actually remove that control effect. But uh, otherwise, he's going to clean up for you any negative status effects that might cause a problem. Uh, so for that reason, he's useful in some situations that are very different than the situations where you use Herman. Let's talk first about Kusunoki pairings. Um, if you're choosing Kusunoki as a commander you might invest in in the early game of Rise of Kingdoms and, you know, card up in the top where I talk about really solid early game investments, you know probably at this point that I feel very strongly that Sun Tzu, Boudicca, and Joan of Arc, Sun Tzu and Boudicca to start, then Joan of Arc, are very good early game investments. And you may be thinking, from there, what do I want to do next? If it is an archer and you're considering Kusunoki, the reason I really like him as a commander is that he is a very, very good as a garrison commander for you because he does area of effect damage. Um, if you're in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms, there's a non-trivial chance that someone's going to try to send a bunch of marches against your city. If they do that, Kusunoki will be very good because he hits multiple targets. For that reason, one of my favorite picks for the open field and for defending your city is the combination of Sun Tzu and Kusunoki together. It doesn't really matter which one of them is the primary for defending your city, and if you're bringing a full march of archers into the battlefield, you're going to want to have a Kusunoki primary commander. Uh, the reason I really like this as a pair, and it's one of my favorites, uh, both for Canyon and for open field, if you're bringing archers, is that 
You know, look, people cluster in areas for big fights. Uh, that is especially true in the Ark of Osiris game mode. Um, and Sun Tzu is going to hit lots of targets and generate lots of rage. And the thing that Kusunoki desperately needed was a way to generate rage. He does lots of damage, and Sun Tzu is going to elevate that damage. That is going to be my number one pick for a Kusunoki pairing. My number two pick for a Kusunoki pairing is going to be Boudicca. Again, it's no coincidence that Sun Tzu, Boudicca, and Joan of Arc here are my first recommendations for investing in commanders. Um, and Kusunoki is a great pair with Boudicca. The thing that I really like about Boudicca is that she is going to be reducing the rage of the target that you're battling. She's going to reduce the attack of the target you're battling, so that utility is very good. However, she's also going to heal, which is something Kusunoki can't do, and generate rage. Not a ton. 50 rage, but she is generating rage, and I like that combination. They both care about doing high amounts of skill damage and are a very natural pair on the battlefield. Um, those would be my recommendations for epic archer pairings with Kusunoki. And there's a caveat, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is Herman pairings. Now, Herman, as I mentioned, is a utility commander. He also really cares a lot about generating huge amounts of rage to maintain a high amount of uptime on his silence. The advantage of a commander like Herman is that if you're going to run around in the open field, rather than caring more about Sunset Canyon, rather than caring more about uh, defending your city, because some of his itemization here is going toward march speed, even though he is a garrison commander, that itemization is kind of wasted when you're defending your city. Um, if what you care about is battling in the open field, the advantage of Herman here is this march speed and the utility. Um, look, the AoE damage from Kusunoki is really cool, but if you're a free-to-play or low spender, um, your damage is going to be sort of impacted by the amount of research you have pretty substantially. Um, whereas the utility of something like the first skill on Herman will be unchanged, regardless of your technology. Um, the silence is a silence for two seconds regardless. Decreasing the rage by 100 decreases the rage by 100 regardless. So if what you wanted to be doing was some utility on the battlefield, which is, I think, what a free-to-play player should strive for, to be extremely supportive of the heavy hitters so that the heavy hitters can focus more on raw damage and you can focus on utility. Because look, this utility is not impacted by your technology, uh, whereas that damage factor right over here is. Now, that is a very solid damage factor for a single target. Uh, 1,150 is very, very good. Um, and you'll still do solid damage with Herman. He's got mobility. I think... Kusunoki is the better garrison commander, but Herman is the better open field commander um, for that march speed and utility. Very good. Um, my number one pick is again going to be Sun Tzu. No coincidence, he's the first commander that I recommend you invest in along with Boudicca. Uh, my number two pick is going to be, no surprise, Boudicca. Both Sun Tzu and Boudicca are generating big amounts of rage. That is going to enable you to have a higher uptime on your two-second silence on this active skill. Now, what does a silence even do? It makes it so that if you got to full rage, which you can see here, every active skill has a rage requirement that's listed in red. If you would have had full rage and been able to cast your active skill, you can't. You have to wait until the silence has worn off, and then you can cast your active skill. So the way to really think about that is it's delaying when the enemy will use their active skill, um, which is in, in some ways like a rage reduction. Even though it's not actually reducing the amount of rage that they have, although this skill happens to also do that, um, what it's doing is making it so that they're delayed, which is about the same as like, oh, it's like you had less rage. It's one way to, to think about it. Um, very powerful effect. You can stop a much higher power player from doing the thing that they're trying to do by silencing them, uh, and that is very powerful. With that said, um, there's one other thing that I think Harmon can do that I really would not recommend. I really would not recommend it with Kusunoki, and that is that um, Herman is generating rage, right? There's a 10% chance to generate 100 rage, which is a non-trivial amount of rage. That's pretty darn solid. Um, I think that opens up one other pairing that Kusunoki did not have, and that's if you want to go kind of a raw damage route, 
Osman, I think, is a really solid secondary with Herman. Um, Osman really wanted the march speed to get around the battlefield. Osman really wanted the rage to cast skills more often, and that is because this third skill fires off every time you use an active skill. So let's say you get to 1,000 rage. Herman uses his active skill, 400 damage factor. There's a one-second normal attack window, and then there's a one-second boom. You do an active skill of Osman. That also fires off Sword of Osman, another 400 damage factor, in addition to his own active skill, which is 1,100 damage factor, which is pretty solid. I do want to point out that with the expertise skill on Herman, he actually has more damage factor, and a bunch of utility, which is kind of remarkable. With that said, the thing about Osman that just makes him so stupendous is with a Rage Engine, which Herman can bring if you use the skill tree, um, you're going to fire off those skills with Osman a lot faster, do a lot more damage. It's going to work out real well. This pairing opens up to you. I don't love this pairing because it's focused on damage, and I think you should be focused on utility if you're going into the open field. However, Herman brings the utility, Osman brings the damage. It's a pretty solid pairing. Now, one commander I didn't mention is Joan of Arc. Um, Joan of Arc is a solid utility play. Um, I don't think she's the most optimal fit with Kusunoki or Herman because both of them are high skill damage commanders. They want to generate lots of rage and have a secondary commander that generates lots of rage too. Um, you could use Joan of Arc as the primary for the support tree in the early game and bring all archers, which I think will be solid in the early game. So you should consider using a build like this, focusing on this tree over here, ignoring all this other stuff. Um, and that's kind of the problem with Joan of Arc is that later on, you're going to run out of really good options for where to put your talent points, um, and she'll fall off pretty substantially in terms of quality of commander and combo that you could bring. Uh, but in the early game, you could use a Joan of Arc primary and either Kusunoki or Herman as the secondary, and they will do very well. In fact, I would make the argument that if what you want to do is power out Joan of Arc's first skill more frequently, which does a huge amount of buffs and raid generation for everybody nearby, that Herman is a better pick as a secondary because he too will generate rage. Um, if you wanted to do more damage, Kusunoki would be the pick there, but already you're making a utility play by pairing with Joan of Arc. Focus on the utility. Now, there is one other pair we haven't talked about, which is, of course, the natural pairing of Kusunoki and Herman themselves. I think that's a solid choice. Kusunoki wanted Rage Gen. Herman's going to bring that. Uh, I think that the pair is good. Uh, Kusunoki wanted March Speed. Herman brings that too. They're kind of doing two different things, one focused on AoE, one focused on single target damage, uh, but they're pretty gosh darn solid as a pair. If I had to rank all of these pairings that I've provided to you today, I'm going to make the argument that the number one pick that I will recommend to you is going to be Kusunoki and Sun Tzu and to make it the garrison for your city and to consider using it in Lost Canyon or Sunset Canyon as well. Uh, that is a solid pair doing a huge amount of AoE damage. I really do enjoy those commanders together. And I have used the Kusunoki Sun Tzu pair for a very, very, very long time. That said, if your focus is more on the open field, then I'm going to make the slam dunk choice of using the combination of Herman and Kusunoki. I don't care too much which one is the primary or the secondary. Their talent trees are the same, and we'll show you those in just a moment. And if what you're focused on is just pure utility in the open field, um, then my recommendation to you is actually going to be that Joan of Arc Herman combination just to generate huge amounts of rage so that you can fire off the active skill of Joan of Arc as much as possible, buffing your nearby friends as much as you can for as long as you can live. Um, Joan of Arc primary, Herman secondary will be my third pick for an extremely supportive archer march. At that point, though, if you're using Joan of Arc primary, you could be using a mixed set of troops. Um, the thing I want to caution you against if you use Herman is that he gives 10% more march speed 
with archers only. If you put some other troop type in that march, if it's infantry, if it's cavalry, then they're going to go as fast as the slowest troop in that march. Spoiler alert, that's going to be your infantry, and this march speed will be completely worthless. Um, that said, you know, it's not all of what he's doing is the march speed. Uh, however, the other thing that you're missing out on is, you know, the archer attack. So I would probably try to stick to archers, and if you used the Herman combo with a Joan of Arc secondary, that would also be fine. Let me show you some of the builds that I would recommend for all these different activities. Um, we're going to look at Kusunoki here, but uh, that's only because I have him at level 60. You can choose uh, either either one. They have the exact same trees. Um, this is a full archer tree build. This is good for the open field, but does not focus as much on generating rage. It leverages the top tier of the archer talent, whistling arrows. Um, you've got a chance on your normal attacks to increase all damage dealt. Uh, the reason I went this route with Kusunoki is that he just doesn't have huge amounts of rage gen, and because of that, he gets a lot of benefit for, by focusing on those normal attacks. Um, however, there is a lot of emphasis here on skill damage, both archer tree and in the skill tree, uh, and we do generate a non-trivial amount of rage with Rejuvenate. Um, with that said, another route that you could go is to focus instead very heavily on the skill tree. Uh, the advantage of this is generating huge amounts of rage, and if you've got a secondary commander to Kusunoki or to Herman that cares about having rage gen, and spoiler alert, I think with Herman, like this is kind of a slam dunk build because the whole point is to generate rage. Um, then this is the route you're going to want to go. The thing I'll caution you against is to be very careful picking up something like Naked Rage. It's going to increase your damage dealt, but also your damage taken by skills by an equal amount. Um, this is all upside in a game mode like Sunset Canyon, where you can kind of line up against folks that maybe don't do skill damage, uh, but it's going to be really detrimental in the open field and regular Kingdom Warfare. If you're paddling against a T5 player, their 6% extra skill damage to you is going to be way worse than what you do to them. The other thing I'll call out is that this uh, talent, Latent Power, uh, emphasizes additional skill damage. Kusunoki has a non-trivial amount of that. Additional uh, skill damage shows up over here. Here's additional damage factor. Um, you see it over here, additional damage factor. Um, and you see it right up here, additional damage factor. This is separate from your direct damage factor. Um, so this talent has more of an emphasis here on the additional skill damage dealt. Um, the last build I want to show you is a city defense build. I think this is a pretty solid build here. Uh, it gets the very best of the garrison tree for defending your city. It generates huge amounts of rage, which I think is a thing you're very, very interested in doing, especially, again, if you're leaning in on that utility from Herman. You want to fire off those skills as fast as you can, and quite frankly, Clearing the debuffs that are on your city from Kusunoki's active skill is also very, very good. So going in on the skill tree is not a bad idea. There is a little bit of flex up over here with uh, rapid fire increasing your normal attack damage. You could instead go this route when the army is le reduced to less than 50% strength, increase the attack of all troops by an upwards of 9%. I'm actually going to make the claim that Probably Arrows Knocked is better for defending your city than going the route of Rapid Fire. Um, but I will say that, you know, gosh, um, you're in trouble. You're in trouble if you're getting below 50% unless you're in a game mode uh, like Shadow Legion, where that is guaranteed and it's a pretty safe scenario to be going below 50%. In that case, I'm going to say Arrows Knocked is a good pickup. All that said... Those are the last kind of talent points you would pick up on your way to level 60. Uh, for defending your city, I would start by getting Rejuvenate. I would then make my way over to Impregnable and Nowhere to Turn, then to Feral Nature, then all the way over to Razor Sharp, and lastly, Arrows Knocked. 
So hopefully you've enjoyed this video about epic archer pairings. If you did, please again do consider liking the video. That's your way of giving me a high five or subscribing if you want more because guess what? In the not too distant future, we're going to talk about legendary and epic archer combinations, uh, which is pretty solid. I'd be eager to know in the comments which of these archer pairings you're most interested in. Was this video helpful to you? Let me know, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.